All right, hello, my fellow coders. Welcome back to this Fresh Vote series. Uh, and if you are following this in real time, my apologies for uh, the delay between the last video and this one. The last video was like, I think three or four weeks ago. Um, life got busy, it was holiday type season, and so on and so forth. My apologies. I am going to do my best to stay on schedule now. So uh, in the last video, I promised you guys that we would uh, be creating the sort of or modifying the look and feel of the Fresh Votes website. Um, and this is going to be no small task at the beginning because we're going to have to learn a lot of stuff getting into this. Um, but first and foremost, there are a couple options that we have to choose from. Uh, the two most popular ones are um, uh, Bootstrap. Bootstrap is a uh, sort of like a CSS framework. Oh, I just... Uh, I switched over, so I, I switched over to Solar Power, and it rebooted my uh, my modem. I, I record all my videos and, and publish them using Solar Power now, which is kind of cool. Um, so yeah, Bootstrap is a an HTML CSS framework that allows us to uh, make our our pro, uh, programs applications look nice without really putting in uh, you know an over the top amount of effort. Um, there's also CSS Grid, which is sort of you can almost think of it as the competitor because it's another way to sort of lay out um, your, your look and feel of your, uh, of your front end. Uh, but when I fiddled around with CSS grid, although this is native, this is supported natively within, um, a browser, uh, I didn't, it, it was a lot harder for me to grasp and to get it looking the way I wanted it to look, excuse me, when compared to something like bootstrap. So bootstrap is not native. And by, by that, I mean, we need to bring in a library. We need to import the bootstrap library um, CSS files that sometimes even JavaScript files depending on what sort of functionality we want um, so it's not native typically in the grand scheme of things in the, in the long term the non-native solutions tend to die and the native solutions tend to win okay um, but like I said I've, I've been trying to wrap my head around CSS grid and get it to work the way I want to and it just seems a lot more cumbersome than Bootstrap. So perhaps someday, somewhere down the line, CSS Grid will become uh, a lot more uh, easier, uh, user-friendly to use for programmers. Um, but really, for now, I think Bootstrap sort of wins it out, uh, in my personal opinion. As of the recording of this video, Bootstrap is in version 4. There was uh, version 3 uh, was very, very popular and is mostly around the interwebs as of, again, the recording of this video in uh, early 2019. Um, but, you know, who knows? In the landscape, you know, maybe 4.0 and, and further are, are going to become the more popular ones. So uh, that's long story short is to say I'm going to be using Bootstrap version 4 to prettify, to make our, uh, our um, front end look prettier. Okay, that's the plan. So how do we get started? Well, the quick start is you copy paste the link, uh, the, the, the style sheets, uh, which is the Bootstrap dot min dot css uh, we copy that into our um, programs okay so for the i should say our into the um what should we call it uh, html pages there we go i'm losing words apparently so uh, we copy paste this into the html pages so the first one i'll do is maybe log in okay so it says it's copy paste it into the head somewhere um oh was it the head that it said was it the head that it said? Into your head before all other style sheets. Okay, so it should be the first thing, maybe after the title uh, that you paste into um, the head of your whatever page you want to work with. Eventually, we're going to extrapolate this out into a um, sort of a, what's it called? A fragment uh, inside of Timeleaf. A fragment is kind of like a, a global template that you can use for all pages. Um, but we'll get there when we get there. And the second thing is they say many of our components require the use of JavaScript to function, uh, specifically the popper or uh, some other stuff. So you can actually bring in um, some of the uh, JavaScript code as well. For now, we're not going to use it because I'm not going to be building out anything that requires it. Um, and if you can get away with not bringing it in, um, then by all means do so because then you can use less uh, less CPU cycles to go and load this stuff up and then, you know, go, you know, it just, it saves some back and forth. If you, if you don't need it, you don't really want to bring it in because it's just extra overhead. Okay. But just bringing it in, uh, well, it actually might have, uh, it might have a, um, an impact. So if I go to login screen now, you see it, it's already had an impact. Do you see the difference between this page compared to, if I go to create account, this page, 
the fonts are slightly different, right? Uh, the buttons certainly look different. Look at the buttons over here compared to the button over here now. Mm -hmm. And if I click on it, you see there's a blue around it. Um, there's slightly a blue highlight that comes around it, right? So if I click, click, if I click and let go, then it's gonna activate the button. But so already by default, it's trying its best to make our code look nicer. Um, the rest is up to us. Really, it's up to me to teach to you. And then it's up to you to take it and run with it. So what can we do to make our login screen look prettier than this? We, you know, we started down the path, uh, but what, what can we do? Well, if we go, there's a whole bunch of documentation here. Typically the documentation I'm interested in, in, in is I think in the components. Yeah, so there's a whole bunch of components here on the website, getsbootstrap.com. Um, you go to the components area and uh, well, I guess you go to the uh, documentation. Is that where, hold on, let me go to the bootstrap home. I say, yeah, you can go to documentation tab and then go to components. Uh, and you can see all the different type of components that you can leverage to make stuff look pretty. For example, buttons. You can make buttons look uh, and feel different depending on what how you want it to look, right? Um, primary, secondary, that kind of thing. So the first thing I guess I can do is, is make our, our main button look better. And by main button, I mean the login button. Typically you, you wanna log in more than you wanna create an account. Uh, so maybe we want to make that change. So how do we do that? Well, we find our login button, which is right here. And we look at what it requires. It needs to be type button and it brings in classes. So Bootstrap leverages classes heavily. Okay. CSS is just basically, um, it, it allows you to create um, or creates a CSS class for you. And then allows you to import that class and sort of use it when you import Bootstrap. Classes are what tell elements um, how to sort of look and feel, okay? So BTN primary class will probably just turn the background of the button blue and the foreground of the button, so the text color, to be white, right? And then there's going to be some um, stuff on hover. So when you see, when you hover over this button, it gets just a slight bit darker, a darker shade of blue. And when you don't hover over it, it gets a lighter shade of blue. So these are all the things that are be going to be coming in from the BTN primary class. These are all predefined, pre-created, ready to rock um, by the people who created Bootstrap. Bootstrap pre-loaded and pre-created these classes for us to use inside of our applications just by saying class BTN and BTN primary. So if you bring the both, you need both of these class, BTN and BTN primary, uh, bring in both of those classes. So we've started with BTN, but if we turn it to BTN and BTN primary, okay, um, we should be able to do something with this. It just should actually uh, do something with our button. So if we go back and refresh, our button turns blue. And as you can see, when I hover over it, it's slightly darker blue. And then when I click on it, it goes into the login and, and whatever. So you see, it's quite easy as long as you know what the what the words are that you need to have. Uh, it's quite easy to, to sort sort of mess around with Bootstrap and and bend it to our will. Okay. So what about this create account button? I, maybe I don't want it to be gray. I want it to maybe be green um, or info. Right. Uh, let, let's do info. Btn info to make it sort of a I don't know a, a slightly more, I guess the teal is the color. I don't know. I'm a dude. I don't know colors very well. Um, so let me refresh. I'm going to make it button info. So there you go, right? So BTN info is what I pasted in there for the create account button. Now it's sort of a different color. Cool. So we were starting to make it look a little bit better. The next thing that's bugging me is I kind of would want this to be centered on the screen perhaps. Um, and also because it's, it's really pushed up against the, um, the side of the screen and that's kind of weird. Right, so in that, I think is layout is where we learned about this, and is it in grid? I forget if, uh, yeah, so in grid, you see there's an example of a class called container. Uh, do they explain container here? I guess it doesn't matter if they explain container, I'll explain it to you. And I'll show you a very simple explanation of container by showing you what the difference is between this screen and wrapping all of this inside of a container. So really you want to take all of the code, so it's actually the form on our login screen, all of this stuff that's highlighted here represents a form. So I want to wrap all of my form inside of a container. I want to put everything in that was previously the form and put that form into what is called a container. So I'm going to hit tab to uh, push this code over and I'm going to paste in the div 
with a class called container. And then I need to terminate this div at the end of the form or wherever it is that I choose to end it. But I would like to end it at the end of the form. And watch what happens. This is no container. And then when I refresh the page, it's going to bring in a container. Watch what happens. Boop. See? So what's happening here is container, uh, the container class will see how it's bouncing around on the screen. So there's a, it, it sort of by default looks at the size of the screen and decides where to put the, uh, the contents that you have inside the container. So the container sort of fits uh, as best as it can the size of the screen that we're working with. And as I'm shrinking my browser window here, um, I'm mimicking something like a mobile, mobile phone. So this is sort of like the size of a, the, the resolution of a mobile phone browser, okay? And as we get bigger, maybe around here is where I'm starting to, uh, you know, mimic some of the smaller tablets. And here is where we have some bigger tablets. And here is where we're getting into some of the smaller screens for computers. And then here is, you know, a, a computer screen. Um, so you can see there's different, uh, different ways that it can mimic uh, different screens. And, and I'll explain more about that in, well, let's say in a moment. So you can see the difference, right? If I take that away, if I take away the container, so I've removed the container, let me re refresh the page, the, co the, the content just stays stuck on the left-hand side, no matter how big or small the screen I make it, if I make it big, if I make it small, the, the, the content does nothing, okay? It doesn't matter if you're looking at it on a, on a mobile phone or on a big screen, it just sits there, which is why the container makes it a little bit more dynamic in terms of how it reacts. If I refresh, it pops over here. So um, cool. So what what mechanism does this? What, what what is it that's going on here with this container? Um, and that's where you need to learn about grids. Okay, grids um, are the fundamental part of Bootstrap. So the way you can think of it here is um, each web page, no matter how small or how large the screen, each of these will have 12 columns. Columns like in a database or like in an in a Excel spreadsheet or a spreadsheet, right? Uh, spreadsheets have columns. This has 12 columns that you can work with, okay? All the time you have 12 columns to work with. And depending on the size of the screen, those columns are gonna be smaller or bigger. So as you make the screen bigger, the width of each of those columns, the 12 columns is gonna get bigger. And as you make the screen smaller, the width of each of those 12 columns is gonna become smaller. And what the container is doing here is it's trying to fit the content inside of a certain number of those columns. I think, I don't know off the top of my head uh, what the container does, but I assume it probably tries to fit it inside of 10 of the 12 columns. So it takes your content, puts it in a 10, or maybe it's eight. I forget what it is off the top of my head. Um, but essentially it leaves some buffer, right? And you can see that there's buffer here. There's uh, there's space. Um, I guess we can almost see if I, if I take my fingers and put them on the screen, you can't see my fingers, but I can count on the screen, the sort of the width, you know, one, two, three, four, five, I don't know, six, seven. So it seems like a, it's about seven or eight. Um, so that means it would be taking up two. Maybe it's, anyway, I don't know how many columns it's taking up, but I, I tried to figure it out. But as you can see, as you get smaller, the columns are gonna get smaller and then boop, it just changed. So now it's it's um, it's it's using a different layout in terms of the, the container has some, some built-in functionality. And it's hard to describe that with just what you saw on the screen. What's a lot easier to describe is showing you how to use the rows and columns and showing you how they react um, when you uh, populate them with with stuff, right? So basically what I can do here, uh, the video is getting pretty long, but I'll, I'll just do this one last thing. I'll take uh, this container and I'll create a row, class row in the div. And then I will create another class inside of the row that says um, six to take up six columns and another one will take up the other six columns. Okay, so if we, how do, how do they, they usually um, illustrate this by maybe having a background color, we'll make it like gray or something. And then this one will make the background color 
um, I don't know, uh, black or something. So is that a good way to do it? We'll see if that actually works or not. Uh, it's not tall enough. So let's also assign a height to be 100 pixels just so we can actually see the content here. 100 pixels. There we go. So you see six columns, six columns, but that is sort of these six columns and six columns are actually centered within the container. So I guess the container, that's why I was having trouble articulating it. The container, um, when you, when you specify a container, it's going to assign those 12 columns inside of that container. Okay. So maybe there's some other logic that, that they use to define how a container works. Um, but you can see how the, how the uh, 12 columns react depending on the size of the screen. Right here, the container is pretty much taking up the whole width of the screen. But as we get a little bit bigger, the container adds some padding, okay? So that's essentially what the container does, I guess, is that it has padding or margins on the left and the right, depending on the size of the screen that will increase or decrease the, the amount of margin um, on the screen. So I guess that's really what the container does, is it, it helps to keep your content more or less centered on the screen um, Anyway, and then you can go, go to town with this stuff, right? So I'll, I'll end this video real soon. Let me just do one more. Let's do three, um, three different columns. But then if we do three different columns, these numbers need to add up to 12. And right now they don't. Six plus six plus six inside of this row is 18. And 18 is bigger than 12, so that's not going to work. So what's 12 divided by three? 12 divided by three is four. So four, eight, 12 and then we can have this one be um i don't know can i do light gray no i can do uh i don't know green or something green i think i can do light gray but anyway see so now we have it split up into thirds and you can mess around with this you can say okay i want this one to be two i want this one to be four and i want this one to be six so the point is uh six plus four plus two is still 12 so that still makes sense so now the one on the right, the green one gets bigger, right? Because the green one we said we want six, the middle one we want four, and the gray one we want two, right? So this is how, if you can imagine putting content into these columns, that's how what it would try to do, it would try to squeeze it into these columns, right? So to take this and put it into the real practice with the, uh, the form here, if we were to create a div class equals row, come on, and then inside we put div class equals column two. And then we took this entire form and moved it up into that column width of two. I just moved it up, you didn't see it, but I did. And then have another, well, let's see if that works. See how it squishes it? So now it's squished to be in line with the because this one is size two as well above it so that helps to give you an idea of how it squishes stuff into two columns okay or you can say you know what i don't want it to be squished into two columns i want it to be uh two plus four so i want it to be in within six columns so then all it's going to do is not it shouldn't necessarily extend everything out to be six columns it's just going to say hey if it fits great don't do any sort of line breaking or anything on it um but you know it'll fit it more or less as as wide as it needs to be um, into that six columns. So really, this could go further. It can go all the way to this black line down, you know, imaginary black, black line down here, uh, if it had um, more content, right? If there's more content, the content would be allowed to come over here before it would wrap to the next line. Okay, and that's sort of what I'll get into in the next video uh, to make this uh, layout look nicer than it already does because there's actually more that we can do to make this look nicer um, you know ignoring the the, the hideous green and, and black and, and gray at the top here so uh, there's more that we can do so I will tackle that in the next video so look forward to seeing you there take care of yourself happy learning bye for now